here's a, here's a question for you then. Um, is there any place for um, restoration without repentance? Because when the scriptures tell us, um, you know, if your brother if your brother sins against you, you should forgive him. You know, and ask how many times and hunt seventy times seventy. You know, it, big big right. Um, we we've got um, I think it's Luke chapter eighteen tells us about that the story about forgiveness and that but if your brother comes he's got you've got to forgive him if he comes in repentance and my question is all right is is there forgiveness can can we forgive um without repentance and i and i'm not saying that the church as a whole i'm not just talking about our church i'm, I'm not i'm not saying that the church as a whole needs to be repenting for acts of 60 70 50 100 years ago i'm not i'm not saying that um i'm just i'm just trying to i'm trying to use what Yeshua sure would was, was saying because you can only have restoration where you're restored back to well-being and health and goodness um if somebody comes to you in repentance i am sorry for this you know rose just suggested that we sh that there needs to be somebody that says sorry now in our church, I, I, I'm 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 quite pleased to be a part of our church because I believe we do have a good heart and we do have good intentions. I think things have been done unintentionally and out of ignorance because we haven't been a, aware of what we individuals have been feeling. Um, but, but I, I I'm wondering how we can be restored back to wholeness. Um, and whose responsibility is that to to repent, to um, come to us and say, I'm sorry about this? Because that is, and we'll move to that in a minute, but that's what I believe is justice. But let's, I don't know, I'm throwing this out. I, this has just come to me as we're talking. Um, you know, I can't be restored to Micah unless he comes to me and says, I'm sorry for what I did you. You know, um, so Sharon, um, Sharon looks like she's ready to talk. Yeah, sorry. Um, one of the things that um, when all of that was going on and we did do a few things as a church and that was after a lot of discussion um, being part of the leadership, there's a lot of discussion around what it is that we should do and how we should do it. But I, 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 you know, I was so um, shocked, I'm going to use that word deliberately, that there was so much resistance to actually just acknowledge that some of our members might, be, might have been impacted by what was going on around our world um, in America, but definitely, you know, the, the protests and, and what happened here in, in England in the UK. Um, I was so surprised that we didn't even want to acknowledge to start off with that <laughs> this was going on. And I realized I was so impacted by it and I was a bit surprised, but what happened really for me was lots of memories started to come back of all the times when I was just completely, um, you know, treated awfully, you know, just because I was black, not for any other reason. I could tell you a hundred things, but you know, and, and, and one of the things that happened for me, and I came from Jamaica when I was seven and I went to school immediately. And the first problem was that I spoke Patwa and I used to be laughed at. I used to be, every people used to didn't want to talk to me. Um, I could go on. It was awful. The first, I mean, it was awful in many ways, but that didn't help. It was like horrible. But I got used to it. You you get used to it. That's the thing. You grow in that space and you take it on board and you deal with it the best that you can deal with it. I then went to live in Blythe in Northumberland. And that was like, that's another country, by the way. Let me just tell you, that is a country all to itself. And number of times I can't tell you how many times 
um, people would say things like, oh, you look just like Serena Williams or Dinah Ross, <laughs> you know. Uh, and I would go, mm, no, <laughs> not really. Um, but, you know, that wasn't so bad. I could deal with that. But it's when you'd go in a shop and, the, and they wouldn't want to serve you. It's when you go in a shop and they, you know, they will serve you, but they wouldn't want to put the change in your hand when you put your hand up the chain, they'd put it on the counter. It's when people call your names for no reason at all as you're walking along the street. It's when people nearly crash their vehicle because they're so busy staring at you. You know, and it, and it wasn't great. Um, but I lived with it, I dealt with it with by Yahweh's grace. And, you know, I'm here today to tell the story. And when the whole thing happened with George Floyd, it, all of it came rushing back because obviously it's just there because you've just pushed it down and you've kind of dealt with it. You just, that's what happens. So it just massively came back to me. And then for me, it was that they, they couldn't understand why you'd want to talk about it. Why the we are a ch I always say well we're a family, we're family, we're a church family. Why isn't it all right to just have this conversation out there with with the church? Have that conversation. Be free to share. Be free. No, and I, when you say we are not saying that the people are racist in our church, that is not what we're saying, and they just couldn't get it. We're saying. We just want you to hear us because actually this is that, this is impacting us, and 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 all people are worried about is that Black Lives Matters is this runaway um, political group that's wanting all kind of radical things to happen. And I'm going, I'm not talking about Black Lives Matters. It's nothing to do with that. This is to do with our own personal experience and the kind of things that happened to me. We never ever talked about it in our congregation because. We're family and we love each other. And yes, we do. But actually, <laughs> all we do is we tend to just get pushed under the carpet and hopefully it will go away and we don't have to think about it. I just don't understand why, like many other churches that are mixed, that had big, you know, they'd meet up with all the and they'd talk about it and address it and hear each other. So going back to your question, Dusley, my answer is this. I don't necessarily think that people need to apologize or be sorry. I just think we just need to be brave and not be fearful because why should we? We're family. Let's talk about it. So that's that's my answer to that. I agree. I think it just needs to be just needs to be acknowledged. I think when it's not acknowledged and it's pushed down, it's like then you're saying I don't matter, which then gives fuel for organizations, organizations like Black Lives Matter to get like more um support because you're not listening so it's like people think talking about racism isn't spiritual and it, therefore it's not biblical therefore it shouldn't be dealt with but if we're fearfully and wonderfully made that means Yahweh likes all the way we look it's deliberate who which families were born into he knew about all the political systems so you can't ignore that everything is biblical that we deal with so it is I think it is ignorance I think it is fear because then it makes people feel uncomfortable um that what they felt was secure and safe isn't actually secure and safe and it means they have to address these issues and that might mean that they could be guilty of doing things that they're not aware of which then just it's just oh can't do that it's a bit of a phobia but i think just acknowledgement because when you have the acknowledgement that can immediately deal with the resentment and that's where satan likes to work that creates division in the church so just acknowledgement if some need to say sorry, then say sorry, but it helps. Then people can hold each other and they can cry and they can heal. And then where there's love, there's liberty, isn't there? I think, I, think, I think the church has, or, or, or is the church addressing the issue successfully. Um, but I think the church is attempting at addressing this issue has, has come late. I, I, I think in in people's um, subconscious and memory is is the Black Lives Matter movement, and so when everyone wants to to raise some some emotions that they're feeling, they automatically go to this Black Lives because that's what's been pumped up, you know, in the media. 
And I think that's the greater battle we're facing, you know, because people are seeing it as black life, you know, that that's the issue, but that really isn't the issue. You know, it's seeing how, how our brethren are feeling. And, and what Micah says about if, if someone wants to apologize uh, for something that they've said, you know, in the past to a, um, a black member of the church, then they should feel free to do that. But equally, um, you know, often when, when we are feeling pain um, derived from past experience or, or even present experience, sometimes, and I'm not making any judgments here, you know, sometimes we can put ourselves in what could be termed as a debtor's prison because we are expecting people to apologize for something that they did that they were completely unaware of, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so, you know, that conversation needs to happen as well. You know, um, th there, there is guilt that, y that Yahweh brings, but if we are feeling shame, then, then it's not from Yahweh. You know, it, it's two different things. You know, guilt is, is ordained by Yahweh, um, but shame isn't. Um, you know, and I think we just need to be upfront and honest with each other. And there needs to be a platform for that, you know, um, for people to share openly so that there can be this um, acceptance. Um, and going back to what, what, what Lily says, you know, the acceptance that we are all here, we are all hurting people originally. And there are, you know, we're, we're on a journey and there are going to be things that upset us. Um, but we're predominantly a family, black, white, Asian, it doesn't matter. We're a family. And as a family, we need to be accepting of, you know, of people's emotions. Um, and if people want to say sorry, great, that, you know, that's wonderful. But um, we shouldn't put that expectation on them, you know, if it was done in complete ignorance. My, my take on that, Isaac, is that, yes, I agree people do things in ignorance, but things affect people. When you're a young child, when you're a young person, even as an adult, because of your self-esteem, somebody that, is, that you look up to say something to you that makes you feel bad, and it is something that can be um, interpreted as being racist or prejudiced or whatever the case might be. At the time when it is done, that person won't necessarily have known that this is going to affect you in this way, but you are on the receiving end. And this is where I'm saying an apology would have been in place for, for it personally for me, if that was me. The thing about it is that I have said something to you. I've said it out of no, nothing. There was no, there was no, no isms or anything that was attached to it. But because of where you are emotionally, because of how you are feeling about yourself, because of your color, because of how you look, because of how you're feeling, because of how everything that has been built on that, that has caused you to start feeling and behaving in a particular way. No, because I don't know that you're feeling that and it has now come to the place where you now can say to me, listen, Rose, you know, when you said X, Y, Z, this was how it made me feel. This was what makes me, and a lot of stuff that I do or a lot of the way that the path that I've chosen in my life is as a result of this. You shouldn't take anything off me to say, oh gosh, you know what, Isaac, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it like that. This was, that is what I mean when I say apology. And I feel that alone will break a lot of things for people. Dastly asks the question, what causes, what, what would cause her to be restored? What would cause me to be restored to you because of something? That, that is one of the key things. And if it is genuine, we are all individuals that's made of spirit and we can feel things. And I genuinely say, oh dear, I'm so sorry. When I said that, this was that or that was that. And I can say to you, well, you know what? And the conversation can be had. But I do feel that for one, for, for a breakthrough, a genuine breakthrough, because sometimes people say things and it's not coming from their heart. They say it because it probably might pacify a situation or they think this is what they should say because of X, Y, Z. But like I say, we can feel things. We can, we can, 
you, you just know that that was just something that wasn't coming from somewhere genuine and it didn't make any it didn't make a difference to you if anything it makes you feel worse because it makes you think what well, i think i'm stupid and that just adds more to it so i feel we need to be genuine we need to be real and it takes nothing to say look i'm so sorry but that wasn't what i meant yeah and I, let, let me just clarify um you know in my statement when i said when i say that people you know have said things in the past in ignorance what i'm so, what i meant by that statement is they won't know to say sorry if they didn't know it, 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 it had an offence. Yeah. It made an, made an offence. Um, so yes, I, I totally agree, Rose, that um, if someone like myself was offended by something that someone said, then that has to be my duty to go to that individual and say, what you have said has really offended me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's scriptural, we know that. Indeed. Um, mm -hmm. And then... And then it's it's up to the, for lack of a better term, the perpetrator, you know, for, for them to to um, to see the offence that they've caused, you know, and yes, offer an apology. Um, and so I'm not, I am in no way, shape, or form saying um, that it's acceptable for thing for people to do things in ignorance. I wasn't saying that. You know, I was saying that um, unless they know that it was wrong, they can't do anything about it. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you, Isaac, because I mean, I got what I got what you were saying, but thank you for that clarification. Um, you certainly we're, we're of the spirit. And if we're of the spirit, we have to do right by each other. We can't come presenting our gifts at the altar, knowing our brother has something against us. And, and present an offering. It doesn't work that way. That's what the scriptures encourages. So we're, we're, we know that. And, I'm, and, I'm, I'm, and so I think in wrapping this section up, I think it's true. There is, I believe, there is a place of um, repentance brings restoration. Um, I'm, I, I'm not saying we should go to the um, government or claim this and claim that and say you should be doing this and because that, that that's the other let's move into that let's move into that aspect you know are we demanding from the government are we demanding from this one and that one the right to do this and that and the other and is it is it acceptable for believers in Yeshua to um seek justice now here's let me revenge is the act of harming someone as punishment for what someone has done. The main difference between justice and revenge is their aim. Justice aims to do, aims to right a wrong, whereas revenge aims to get even, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so let's, let's move into this aspect of justice. How, how do we feel, how can we feel um, that justice should be done in a situation like that? And is it acceptable for us in silent protest? Is it okay for us to join the army of people across the UK, across the world, to silently um, stand in the gap and say I don't stand for this or I do stand for that is my question um because uh, no I'll come back to that in a minute I'll stop ask that question and see some responses could you just clarify justly in terms of what of what you're saying with regards well, well, I'm justice. thinking yeah I'm thinking more about um, let's go back to the incident of George Floyd, and I'm thinking of um, many believers and non-believers went marching in the streets, supporting not not supporting Black Lives Matter. Some weren't supporting it; some were, but it, it, because because that was the only um, physical banner that was raised up as a this is this matters. 
unfortunately, we all came under that umbrella of Black Lives Matter, regardless of whether we felt it or not. Right? So forget that. But I'm, I'm talking about the idea of standing up and trying to get justice for something that was wrong. So you're what not is normally talking about within the church? You're on about. I, I'm talking, yeah, I am talking about well. within the church, but also outside. I'm just using that as an illustration because, because if something is done to us, is it our right to get justice? Is it? Or I'm not talking about, I'm really hoping that revenge is not within the church's um, remit. Revenge is, should not be a part of what we stand for. But justice is completely different, isn't it? It's righting a wrong. Yes. And, and if Yahweh is a God of justice, and I believe he is, yes, Sharon. I'm good. Yes, so I personally would have gone and held up a banner that says <laughs> my life matters <laughs> not really um no I, I would do the whole go and stand with people I, I personally think that's okay as long as I'm not um, um causing violence or mayhem or those things you know if I feel very powerful I feel very passionate sorry about something I feel I would want to, I should feel, I should be okay. It, I should make the choice to do that or not to do that. My opinion, uh, being a believer, I think that's right. I don't believe in a revenge because that's not what it's about. But to say, I don't agree with this, I think that's okay. We will have to do that somewhere along the line as we um, continue our journey. We, at some point are gonna have to stand up and say, actually, I don't agree with that. And that's tough, but we will have to do it at some point. Uh, I'm not talking about Black Lives Matter. No, I, I'm talking I know you. About things in general, yeah. Um, and what what I want to say for me, think the things need to. I, I remember saying to my brother, you know, I feel that's when I was really cross. I was, I, I, if I'm being very honest, I got angry. I got angry at our complacency, and you know, it's political, so we 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 shouldn't be involved. And I'm. Yeah, but again, my opinion. Um, but I said to my brother, what I would what I would love is for government to put their hand up and say, yeah, we messed up. Not that they particularly messed up, but whoever was back along, we messed up. We, we could have done things differently. You know, one thing. Another th thing I thought that they should have apologized about is the fact that when slavery was abolished, they were paying off these people. They were paying them money to, to you know, to let to set their slaves free, as because they were property. And to me, that is so offensive. When you know different, to me, that is so offensive. And you're still saying, "I want money because I paid for them. I want money back." You know, I just felt. Yeah, that could have done with an apology because, and we, we have only just finished paying. Taxpayers have only just finished paying these slave owners. I just think that is, put your hand up, acknowledge it, apologize. And then for me, the second thing that, the third thing that needs to happen is that we need to change the way we do our curriculum at history we need to you know a lot of the things are not there because they're embarrassed about it i it's a fact you know but to me that's part of the deal you know the history should be corrected i've got to use that word thank you sharon i'm being very radical now but it's true <laughs> I think, I mean, I mean, the scripture tells us about, about seeking justice. Um, I, th I think it's Micah, the, 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 the book of Micah, which says about, is it, oh man? Let me read, let me read, let me read it for you. Um, right. Micah 6, verse 8, he has shown you, oh man, what is good and what does Yahweh require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. 
so so before my before you go on isaac is seeking justice and walking in the streets and holding up a banner what yara re requires of us question mark okay isaac i think um i mean obviously uh I know we always go back to the Black Lives Matter because that you know that was what really generated all this. Um, but I think, for me, as as a white person, um, what I know now, um, if I'd known then, I would have been one holding the banner too. You know, because I I I not, I now see the impact it's had on some of our brethren. You know, um, and I, I don't think that there's anything wrong in in fighting for a, a justified cause. You know, I, I think we 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 have to be wary um, if it moves on on the side of political. You know, we have to be mindful of that. But I, I personally don't think there's anything wrong in in seeking justice in that way. Um, if it means that society change, changes for the better, but doesn't con contradict Yahweh's word. You know, it's a fine balance. See, I wasn't saying that we should all go out. I was just saying we, people should have the choice to do that. It shouldn't be frowned upon. You know, as an individual, you should have the choice to stand for something if you want to stand for it. As, as Isaac said, as long as it's not, you know, against Yahweh and against his laws, um, and it's done in love. I, I think uh, I would just query, um, is there, was there a distinction between the believer and the non-believer in that act or word? the two together mesh together over the one cause that would be my question with regards to carrying a banner and walking in silent protest um yeah i'm, I'm not i'm not saying either way i'm, I'm just i'm just trying to be mindful the always <laughs> when you always says vengeance is mine i will repay what does that mean do you think Okay, let's let's be real. I'm of course I'm, I'm a black person, so I I know exactly what we're talking about here. But in, in truth, if Yahweh is who he is, is he is he? Are, you, are we saying he's not aware of this this um, generation after generation after generation, the struggles that black people and others jewish people and yeah. you know we're not just talking about black people the jewish people have been through so much racism so much annihilation so much mm. you know they, they stand you know we're i don't even know if we're second to that but we stand alongside them somehow you know but but they too have been through so so much and are we saying that yahweh is not is not aware of that and that he himself is not going to, his strong right arm or whatever, that he can't come in and do something? Or does it mean that we as individuals need to stand up and be counted and make a statement and, you know, because there is, I don't know if there's a fine balance as to what we should do. Here's a verse for you and then Mike is gonna come in because it's, it's unmuted. I want to just, Honestly, this word, this verse just dropped into my heart last week, and I'm like, oh my days. So, so 1 Peter chapter 2 says this, and when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. I'm like, oh. Mm. <sighs> Are we, I mean, Yeshua knows exactly how black people feel he's been there done that and disrespecting him but he's got the t-shirt and he says he's entrusting himself to him who judges justly um what does that mean micah 
I'm just throwing some points in here. No, right? It's fine. I'm, I'm liking it. Um, I think in terms of protesting, I think it's a case of going there and petitioning. And you can petition to Yahweh on behalf of those that are there who aren't saved and those that are there who are saved. I know things aren't going to be perfect until Yeshua returns. So if it's not racism, it'll be something else. It'll be some kind of persecution. It'll be something. There's always going to be something until he returns. But I feel like he wants us to kind of stand shoulder to shoulder with other people who are there and to feel their pain and to empathise and to be seen to be doing that as well. Because I, I guess people's, some people, I know people's criticism they have of the church is that, yeah, you're just in your church walls, but you don't care what's going off out here. you got no idea. You, you, you're not getting involved in what we're doing. We're suffering out here. You're just in your church singing hymns. So I think we have to be there. But like you say, there has to be that balance of where you're not getting swept away with the emotion, not the emotion, the spirit that may be on people who aren't saved and, and that vibe and all of that, because it's hard. And, and someone who's suffered and someone who's a warrior, it's so easy to get pulled into these areas. And I spend a lot of energy trying to control myself and making sure my doctrine's right and my, my perspective on Yahweh is correct. Because the injustice, it runs deeper than racism. It's, it's, it's something else. There's, there's, there's lots going off. And um, so I understand that. But like, I think even talking about that amongst people who aren't saved, I think that shows them that you actually care. And it shows them that you're human. And and I believe Yahweh is an Elohim of justice. And he will, he will repay when it's time. And it will be devastating, but just and holy. And everyone will see it. But in the interim, I think his people need to be doing what Yeshua did, interceding and, and being seen. That's just how I feel about that. Yeah. I, I think it, it personally, this is how I personally feel. As a believer, if we see injustice, then I think it's part of our role to challenge that, to challenge that injustice. Um, and I think sometimes, and I, I, I don't think that this is, uh, too harsh to say. Um, I mean, obviously, you might want to cut it out, but, but I, I do think that sometimes we can hide behind, behind that statement that Yahweh is a God of justice so that we don't have to react. You know, there is that side of it as well. Um, and I think it's something that we personally have to address within ourselves. You know, that scripture that Dusty read, it, you know, Micah, you know, seeking um, seeking justice wh where there is injustice. You know, that is our responsibility. But individually, we have to know how to respond to that. Mm -hmm. The way I respond will be very different to the way Dasi or Asher responds. But, but equally, I have to find out from Yahweh how he wants me to respond to any injustice that I see, even if it is against someone that I, that I don't even know. If it's injustice, it's my responsibility, you know, to you know, to stand against that as a belief. I'd like to make this point as well. Um, if we think about injustice that we that has been around our world, and and some some famous individuals who protested peaceably, you know, think about Gandhi, you know, injustice and. If he hadn't stood up and say, right, this is not right, we need to do something about it, I wonder if the change would have happened. I think about Martin Luther King. I think if he hadn't stood up and been peaceable about his protesting, whether things would have been much worse than it is now, or it would have taken so much longer for us to have reached where we are now even. So I do think there is a place for us to, as Isaac said, for us to show our face, show our hand. You know what I'm just saying? So, that, um, okay. Can I, sorry, sorry to, keep, to, keep, to keep putting in, but we're, we're, we're at a tipping point now where, where the media is concerned, because what's happening now, it, it, it's beginning to tip the other way. You know, there are so many adverts now where there are more black people, there are more people that are disabled, there are... Um, more Asian people involved. So what's, if we don't get the balance right, we, we're gonna end up uh, creating another movement. What, and then it's gonna end up being tit for tat all the time. 
you know, so I do think media plays a massive role in this, you know, in getting the balance right. Let me jump in and then Rose is going to say something. Um, I do agree there is, there is, um, no, I'm not going to agree with that. Let, let me throw something out in. Is the believer's stance and the believer's responsibility, is it to pray through? And I, we, and I'm not trying to glibly put a bandage or a, a plaster over a wound that is really quite exposed. But, you know, you, we, I'm, and I'm throwing the other side. You, some of you are saying it, it's, it's quite acceptable because justice needs to be dealt with. Um, we need to speak up for those who have no voice. I get that. Um, I'm, I'm really, I have that as, as a strong mantra of my own. I'm going to speak up for those that can't speak up for themselves, you know. Um, but um, I, I'm conscious of the distinction between the believer and the non-believer in an act that is, um, has momentum of the world behind it, standing shoulders together with them to, do, to, to bring about justice. Is that the right stance for believers? I'm asking, I'm not, I don't, I don't know. Um, and I know we're talking about, I'm just trying to give another side to this thought, this um, idea. Um, and certainly, if there is injustice in our world, I, when, when Yeshua was being crucified and he was taken in the garden, Peter got out the sword and sliced off the soldier's ear and Yeshua went in his pain and in his distress. He went and healed the man, for goodness sake. You know, it, it, it didn't... You know, the man, Judas, came to kiss him, to betray him at his final hour. Surely he could have called for millions of angels to just bring about justice and make this right. But he didn't. And, and so the more, the more I think about this, the more we're talking about it, the more I think to myself, as much as this is such a hard thing for us, I, I, I can't keep getting away from the idea that Wow, uh, to be like Yeshua is all I can ask, because it, it's it's humanity says I want to I want to do something I want to react to this, I feel like I must speak up I, I I'm going to not be angry but I'm going to speak up I'm going to support I'm going to do what I can to 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 declare to the world that I disagree with this argument disagree with this action, um yes Rose please. It's just been a thought that's been going through my mind. <clears throat> and I, my, my mind went back to the children of Israel when they were in Egypt. And um, the fact that they were discriminated against too. And they were treated badly. They had their firstborn killed. They had all kinds of things happening to them. Um, but they didn't retaliate in that kind of a way. They started to pray. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering if the role of the church during all of this shouldn't be one of prayer and rather than going out in protest, wouldn't it be better to kind of have a time of prayer and ask Yahweh for his hand to intervene somehow because I don't know if going out and marching with these people is going to make a marked difference. It might help us um, to feel a little bit better, but is that what it will take to make a difference? Would it be better to spend the time in fasting and praying and asking Yahweh to show a way? He, he, he provided a way for the children of Israel and he took them out of that. Yes, a lot of them died and they suffered greatly, but he provided a way. And that was just going through my mind whilst I was just listening to the panel, um, you know, expressing their ideas. I'm glad that um, Rose brought um, in about I think it, no, it was Dasi who said, you know, should we be praying? And 
you know, during that period we did pray, um, mm-hmm. and it is important that we do pray. And absolutely, and if we are to go and do anything, which, are, you know, we need to be led by the Holy Spirit, you know, always, you know, not just in this particular thing, but I would want to think that if I went out, it was because I felt led by the Holy Spirit to go and do that. Not because, oh, I'm having, you know, I want to make, but that I'm being led. That's important. Um, and for me, praying, always first, prayer, always first. You know, that should be the foundation on which we move forward in anything. And so I, I suppose I am, I am believing that Martin Luther King went the road he went because of prayer mm-hmm. because Yahweh led him to do that you know and so it would have to be that otherwise it doesn't have any impact it's not going to change anything it will change if that's what Yahweh wants to do and I would say um remember we were called to wait and that started just about February March and then March was the lockdown and then soon into that this kind of happened Um, So there was a call to prayer, but given that this invoked a lot of emotional stress, it was difficult to try to work through all of the fog and the pain and the, you know, all kinds of stuff that was going on at that time. So, you know, I I get that and I respect that. Um, I'm going to try to close this off. just, I suppose, let me just read one more scripture. Complete chapter 2, verse 19. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of Yahweh. It's commendable. And so I suppose I want, I want to leave that statement with us. We, we've talked quite extensively. Um, I'm not sure that we've reached too many conclusions, but we, we've certainly explored this. Um, but I think the, the thing I want us to take away is that we can bear up under that kind of injustice, racism, um, abuse, those things we can if we're conscious of Yahweh. And, and I, I suppose what I want to do is, is, is to make our audience, and thank you for contributing people on the panel, but really if there is pain, then we owe it to ourselves to go before Yahweh and to receive some healing. And if that healing requires me to go to a brother or a sister who has said some racial remarks, innocently or not innocently, let's get this out in the open. If we say we profess to be a people of love, then we should be able to go to one another, address the issues and find restoration. Repentance and restoration brings about healing and the body of Yeshua is whole. comes together and then we consolidate in something like this and the next time we face something like this we're much more together we're we're not so fragmented in our own little worlds of trying to deal with our own emotions you know but I think moving forward you know we're 18 months on from that incident and I'm suggesting that every one of us that has been affected needs to go before Yahweh and have a conversation with him, talk to him about this, lay it out before him. And if if we need to address it with our brothers and sisters, then we must, because there's no way we can be restored and healed. And and Sharon's recommendation of of education and those things, not sure how we can move that forward. We know that that's certainly an answer to enabling us to move forward, but right now as a church we owe it to ourselves as individuals to sort our own selves out before we try to fix the world but with you sure with you sure we can do these things so thank you for that